So, uh, good morning to all of you. Um, my name is uh, Sanjay Dhawan. Um, my focus uh, for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes would be to basically talk about uh, uh, what is happening in the automotive space and how you know, display and user interfaces um, uh, and, and human machine interfaces are kind of you know, playing a very important role uh, in the way the car is getting more, more and more connected and autonomous. Before I start, uh, just a quick introduction to, uh, to uh, our company. Uh, so I'm uh, with uh, Harman. Uh, Harman, you know, we're, uh, used to be a publicly traded company. Uh, recently we were, we were acquired, and I'll talk about that as well in a minute. Uh, you know, we're a market leader in, in providing the uh, audio, video control and infotainment systems, both, uh, you know, that you use in your daily consumer, um, you know, devices, uh, in your homes, and so on and so forth, or in large venues like this. So these, you know, huge, humongous speakers are, are JBL, which are Harman products. Um, the Staples Center next door is, is powered by, by Harman. And, 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 and we are also number one in, uh, in providing the infotainment systems that go inside, your, inside the car. So this is the, uh, the large screen, uh, which is basically kind of you know, providing you all the infotainment and, and connectivity and other, other functions, basically, and we're, we're a number one company in that space. A global company with almost uh, you know, 33,000 uh, employees worldwide. Uh, recently, uh, about a month ago, month and a half ago, we announced that uh, Samsung is, is acquiring uh, Harman. Uh, so as of today, uh, we're Samsung now. Um, uh, Samsung, uh, you know, as you all know, uh, 20 years back, you know, got into the consumer uh, device space and, and displaced the leaders at that time and became the number one consumer device company. About 10 years back, you know, they entered the, the mobile space uh, and uh, you know, also became you know, one of the leading uh, mobile uh, device manufacturer in the world. You know, recently, uh, they basically decided that they want to get into the automotive space because a lot of trends um, you know, uh, from consumer to, uh, uh, um, you know, to mobile is kind of you know, getting more and more into the, into the car. And, and I'll talk more about that as, as, as uh, I, I proceed in my presentation. And, and they decided this time that instead of doing it organically, uh, you know, they, they want to do it inorganically by, by acquiring a company, and they chose to, uh, to, to acquire Harman. Uh, so as of uh, March 10th, we're, uh, Harman is uh, the fourth new uh, automotive division of, uh, of, of Samsung. I think uh, the, the, the goal here basically is that you know, co the, the combination of uh, Samsung and Harman, you know, we're basically using that to kind of you know, enable the, the new uh, uh, vehicle of tomorrow. Uh, a, a, uh, the new car, you know, which is, you know, which, you know, which, which uh, is being you know, architected uh, you know, for 2020 and beyond, you know, is going to be you know extremely kind of you know you know complicated with with uh, lots of new technologies inside it. You know, we already are basically seeing um, the emergence of you know the car getting more and more connected uh, with its own uh, telematics unit, uh, with its own um, uh, you know uh, central compute platform, which basically has you know a huge amount of you know you know you uh, know uh, uh, capabilities to 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 process you know a lot of you know different uh, data, which is basic, which is being generated inside the car. Um, you know has you know multiple different displays uh, for instrument cluster to assist the driver, uh, the infotainment displays, other rear seat displays, and, and 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 so on and so forth. But but more importantly is you know is is also integrating new technologies like the one that we heard about in the previous talk. Um, you know the uh, you know we're working on uh, you know bringing in AR uh, with navigation inside the car. So, uh, so today, you know, you basically get your, you know, static navigation maps, but tomorrow, you know, using uh, the, the camera, a front-facing camera inside, inside the car, you know, you'll be basically able to get the actual uh, camera feed uh, and, 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 and the navigation instructions which are going to be augmented on, on, uh, on your maps. So you can basically see the actual, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, rendering of you know uh, where you are going and, and and so on and so forth, including the street names, uh, the uh, 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 numbers of you know various different building numbers and so on and so forth. Uh, autonomous is is another uh, you know key area which basically is you know is requiring us to to build you know some some amazing amount of you know compute and other capacity inside the car and I think uh, you know displays and and how uh, the driver uh, you know interacts with you know and and the passengers you know uh, 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 interact inside an autonomous car is another area where the display industry can you know really help uh, uh, the automotive OEMs and and companies like uh, like ours. So in you know in terms of uh, uh, the key uh, mega trends which are transforming the cars, um, you know I've listed uh, six of those here. Um, you know it starts with uh, you know smart audio. Um, you know it's uh, one of the areas you know which is uh, uh, improving and 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 you know uh, a, playing a very important role you know inside the car. You know, a lot of interactions are becoming voice uh, and voice-oriented. Natural language, uh, you know, plays a very important role uh, uh, in, um, you know, in, in giving those interactions inside the car, basically. So instead of, uh, uh, you know, having knobs or touch screens and, and kind of, you know, creating uh, um, uh, distractions, you know, for the driver, uh, uh, audio, and, and voice, you know, is, is going to play, play, play a very important role. Uh, cockpits are getting more and more converged, you know, today. In a typical car, you know, we have an instrument cluster, we have our uh, uh, infotainment uh, screen, and, and we also have our, our mobile phone inside the car. And we as drivers are, you know, uh, typically interacting with uh, three of these screens when we are driving. In a typical, uh, you know, uh, when you are driving on a freeway, at 65 miles an hour, if you don't look forward for four seconds, your, your car has basically traveled the, 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 the length of a football field. So that's, you know, uh, how important it is, you know, for all the drivers to basically, you know, always be kind of, you know, looking at, uh, looking forward. And, and I think, uh, you know, uh, cockpit convergence where, uh, you know, a lot of information which is being generated uh, by various different devices gets converged into a, uh, uh, into a device, into a screen that basically is, is assisting the driver in the direction uh, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, where they need to focus on, you know, becomes extremely important. Cloud connectivity, uh, this is another you know, mega trend that I'll talk about in a little bit more deta details as, as I move forward in my presentation. But needless to say that the car is getting more and more connected with either embedded uh, 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 a modem or uh, you know, through, your, through your mobile phone. Artificial intelligence, machine learning is playing a very important role as well uh, inside, uh, uh, inside the car. You know, we're, working on, you know, uh, algorithms, you know, predictive algorithms to kind of, you know, creating predictions for what the driver may want to do. You know, for example, um, you know, many times, you know, when you're going from your uh, home to your, uh, from your office, you don't need navigation um, because you know the route, right, as a driver. But the reason you start the navigation system inside the car is because you want to get traffic information. Um, you know, why can't the car basically learn that, you know, that you are uh, at your office address, you are going to your home, and, and, and basically kind of, you know, if there is any traffic uh, problems, you know, to basically start an alert and change your route, right? So that's just a very simple example, but we are using machine learning, AI, uh, in, in predicting the, the driver behavior and, and basically kind of, you know, coming up with uh, uh, new ways of, of, of interacting with the car and making it extremely, you know, simple and easy for the driver uh, and the passengers. You know, shared mobility, you know, it's a big trend. Obviously, many of us use, you know, the Ubers, the Lyfts, the, uh, uh, the, the, the various different car sharing apps. And, and this is a trend that is, you know, going to, you know, also transform, you know, a lot of uh, what happens in the, in the automotive industry. You know, I, uh, I'm a user of, of Uber, uh, but uh, this morning it, it really helped me. And I'll, I'll take a minute here to share with all of you. So, uh, 
you know, I was taking a very early morning flight from uh, Mountain, from San Francisco to, to, to LA. The flight was at 5.40 a.m. I am five minutes away, around 5 a.m. Uh, from San Francisco airport. And the car that was, you know, taking me to the airport just completely dies on the, on the side of the road. So this is uh, my limo driver, and, and the car is completely dead, and I'm literally five minutes away about to miss my flight, you know, giving a heart attack to my colleagues, you know, who were waiting to make sure that, you know, I reach here in time. Uh, I get out of the car. Uh, it's 5 a.m., obviously not very safe. It's dark. You know, I can't really walk to the airport. Um, I take my phone out, and I kind of, you know, request an Uber. The Uber could exactly pinpoint the location that I was in on the freeway. And within two minutes, there was an Uber ride to take me to that last half a mile <laughs> to, my, uh, uh, to the terminal. So uh, the point here basically is that, you know, I think the shared mobility um, and, and, and the car sharing, uh, uh, you know, uh, apps and technologies are also, you know, uh, you know, really transforming the whole automotive industry. Autonomous uh, driving, we all, you know, are, are, are uh, talking you know, different companies are at different stages. Uh, you know, so are we uh, at, at Harman Samsung. You know, uh, uh, in, in production right now is, you know, what we call level two autonomous drive, you know, driving capabilities, be it in Tesla or Mercedes or BMW or other cars, basically. But clearly, you know, as uh, uh, things, as uh, the technology evolves, uh, you know, uh, the, the goal there basically is to keep on adding the, 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 the functionality to take it to level four. So level, level zero, by the way, hands-on, wheels-on, eyes-on the roads, and, and level four is, you know, hands-off, feet-off, eyes-off the road, right? So, uh, uh, so we're at the level one, level two level right now, but a long way to go, um, you know, in the coming, you know, uh, five, 10, 20, uh, 30 years, so so a lot of you know investments, a lot of uh, great work in, uh, happening in the industry. Um, uh, obviously, uh, computing is playing a huge role, but also sensors, lidars, cameras. You know, all these technologies have to basically evolve together to create you know the level four autonomous experience that uh, uh, that uh, all of us are working working towards. So, uh, in terms of uh, you know bringing uh, the discussion here more closer to the uh, on the display and, and user experience side, <clears throat> the uh, the experience today from a driver perspective is you know very disjointed. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know there are you know many different uh, displays inside the car, and and each of these displays are basically kind of you know working in a in a disjointed fashion. And what I mean by that is basically that uh, the instrument clusters are kind of working independent of, of the infotainment of your mobile phone and so on. Um, the uh, you know, best example I can give you is that you know, uh, you know, when you're driving, um, your navigation uh, uh, maps basically knows the, uh, uh, the, 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 the speed limits on various different roads and, and, and so on and so forth but your cruise control system or your dynamic adaptive cruise control systems inside your car are not basically kind of you know, talking to your navigation uh, 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 systems to basically say, okay, now you are, you know, um, I want to stay within speed limits. A, a system where the two systems are, are talking to each other basically will be able to, you know, give the user the option that, hey, I want to go on cruise control, but I also want to stay within my, within my speed limits of, of the car, uh, you know, of, of various different roads so that, uh, you know, you drive safely. So, uh, and, and there are many such examples that I can give where, you know, when, when the systems are very disjointed, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the experience that we are able to deliver to the customers is, is, you know, is a disjointed experience. So what we are basically doing from a, you know, in terms of where this experience is, is going is, is convergence. You know, in, in our company, we're kind of, you know, converging and creating a single compute platform that's, you know, that, uh, that is a very powerful uh, compute platform, which basically, you know, uh, can run multiple different functions using, uh, you know, virtualization and other technologies to kind of, you know, keep those functions separate, but, but also, you know, enable the interactions between various different subsystems inside the car. You know, just to give you um, an, an idea, in a typical car, 
you know, there are between 20 to 100 embedded control units uh, running completely loosely coupled, you know, separately. And, and there is, you know, uh, anywhere from 20 million lines to about 100 million lines of software code, which is basically running, you know, all these different systems uh, 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 inside the car. You know, the idea basically here is that, you know, uh, from a user to improve the user experience for, uh, 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 for the driver and the passengers, you know, we, we need to basically kind of, you know, uh, drive towards convergence and, and with the convergence, you know, will come, uh, you know, these systems, you know, basically, uh, you know, working more closely together and, uh, uh, you know, presenting information which is, you know, more driver-centric, um, you know, uh, and, and more easier to consume uh, by the driver. Um, uh, in terms of, um, you know, the key areas, uh, you know, that, uh, that I feel, you know, uh, where uh, work is going on with regards to kind of, you know, humanizing uh, a, a connected car. Um, uh, design and HMI is, is playing a, a very important role. Um, HMI is, is human machine interface and, and there is, you know, there are all kinds of different technologies, you know, which, which uh, companies like ours and many others are working on. Um, you know, obviously when, you know, in our mobile phone, or, uh, you know, we use touch and, and other mechanisms to basically interact with our mobile devices. Uh, remember, you know, in a car, you are driving. You're not supposed to, your, your both hands are supposed to be on the, on the wheel, uh, on, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and your, your eyes are supposed to be on the road, not looking at different, uh, different screens. So with that constraint in mind, uh, basically, you know, yes, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the interaction with the driver and, and what technologies to use, you know, gives a uh, new set of challenges. Obviously, voice is a very important uh, uh, way of interacting, and there's a lot of work going on in natural voice, uh, um, uh, you know, interactions, many different companies. Google is, is, is uh, contributing a lot, and so are, you know, other companies as well in terms of, you know, basically kind of, you know, making that, uh, uh, that voice interaction, audio interaction with the, with the car more, uh, more uh, uh, user-friendly. But there are other uh, areas as well. You know, for example, you know, many of you may have experienced, you know, a little bit of a haptic feedback uh, on your uh, steering wheel. And, and, and that same, uh, you know, technology is coming into kind of, you know, the, uh, uh, the touch pads or the, the various different, you know, uh, 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 other mechanisms where you're basically getting, instead of looking at a screen or touching a screen or pushing a button, there are other ways of basically interacting with the car. And, 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 and the, uh, uh, the HMI uh, and the you know, interactions basically uses this haptic feedback either on the steering wheel or on some of the device to basically tell you to press a button, not press a button, go left, right, you know, whatever interaction you need to do with the car. Um, you know, various different advanced interfaces uh, uh, like, you know, heads-up display, you know, are playing a very important role, uh, you know, to basically take... Uh, information from all these different uh, uh, subsystems that I talked about earlier and converge it and basically kind of, you know, project it in a direction which is, you know, where you are driving and, and, and you in, uh, in interacting with the, with the car. Um, intelligent personalization is, is playing a very important role um, also uh, inside the car. You know, I gave some examples earlier, but, uh, you know, I think we're working very closely with Microsoft, for example, to, uh, uh, you know, to basically, you know, look at uh, some of the uh, uh, productivity uh, applications that, uh, that, that they produce and how to basically kind of, you know, you know personalize it and, and, and present it in a very simple and easy way on, on the various different displays and otherwise, you know, inside, inside the car. Uh, you know, similarly, conte contextual uh, solutions are, are also playing a very important role because, you know, you want to bring the context uh, of, of uh, you know, presenting and consuming this information for, uh, for the driver. Um, audio and, and sound management, I mentioned earlier about voice, but, you know, uh, one other example there would be that we introduced a new technology called individual sound zones inside the car. Uh, you know, 
you know, how many times, you know, uh, uh, has it happened to, to all of you where you are driving in the car and you want to do a phone call and the kids want to listen to music and, 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 and they're chatting away? <laughs> Happens all the time, right, to all, all of us. So, so what, what we have done is basically kind of, you know, created individual sound zones so you can convert your car into either two or four sound zones and, and uh, while, the, while the driver uh, or one member of your family is, is having a conference call, you know, the others can be basically listening to the music and so on and so forth, and all this without headphones, okay? So this is just in your natural environment, you're basically kind of, you know, sitting there, and, and, and we do this with, uh, you know, very uh, sophisticated sound management, including, you know, very active noise cancellation and so on, right? Um, and finally, obviously, displays uh, both the center display and the uh, and the rear seat displays and other other instrument cluster displays will uh, will you know play uh, keep playing a very important role uh, uh, you know in in humanizing the car. So, in terms of you know the the, the building blocks you know that that uh, that are important you know I mentioned uh, um, uh, connectivity. Um, uh, Cloud mobility analytics, you know, will play a very, very important role, you know, moving forward. Um, uh, the uh, the connectivity can be through native inside the car or through your mobile phone. Um, uh, the analytics, because there is, you know, lots of data that is being generated inside the car, and 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 this data will basically play, you know, a very important role in terms of, you know, basically, you know, creating. Uh, new um, use cases, new set of services, you know, for the drivers and and the users, you know, of the cars. Um, I mentioned the the UI um, um, and the AI uh, will will play a very important role, you know, sound management, uh, etc. And 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 finally, cybersecurity. Um, I think as the car gets more and more connected, um, you know, it's um, uh, securing it becomes a you know a extremely important. Uh, uh, you know, area, and you know, almost all the companies in the space, including ours, you know, were you know very much focused on that. Uh, in a uh, in a PC or a mobile world, you know, if there is a hack on your PC or a or a phone, it's a nuisance. In case of a car. If there is a hack inside your car, it's life and death, right? So we're taking, you know, obviously cybersecurity, you know, uh, extremely importantly, uh, just like you know, uh, you know, we should. Um, you know, in terms of uh, how uh, this this whole uh, uh, in a new um, uh, area of of a connected car is emerging, you know, it's the the approach is you know very evolution. Um, you know, it's a it's an industry, um, you know, like uh, um, uh, one of the other speakers said earlier, you know, which is you know typically uh, in a PC world or a mobile world, you know, you are you know owning a device for six months to two to three years, uh, but a car you own for ten years plus, right? A typical life of a of a car, and and as a result, basically, kind of you know the uh, uh, the, the process uh, of of adding some of these new technologies, you know, has to have you know, a little bit more longer cycle in terms of, you know, their, their life cycle and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the approach that the industry is basically taking is to start with the architecture and basically get the architecture right. So here, um, you know, having uh, a, uh, a compute platform that can basically live the life of, of the car, uh, you know, that's, that's 10 years, you know, becomes, beca becomes important because, you know, we're, we don't change our cars as, as often as we change our PCs or our mobile devices. So kind of, you know, looking at uh, 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 the core architecture becomes very important. You know, looking at, you know, how to kind of, you know, secure it, but also how to update it is, is very important. So the industry is basically looking at ways of, 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 uh, of updating um, uh, the car on a regular basis, and, and uh, I think, uh, you know, you have uh, started seeing many OEMs basically introduce that, um, uh, you know, the technology over the air update, uh, so that uh, just like you update your apps, um, your PCs, um, uh, you, you can do the same thing with your car as well. Uh, you know, Tesla obviously introduced it with uh, with uh, their Model S, but many other uh, OEMs and, and uh, companies like ours are basically enabling them to uh, to, to bring uh, these new OTA technologies so that uh, 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 the hardware, you know, which is, you know, which is a long, longer life, um, 
inside the car, you know, can be basically updated with new software and new set of, you know, services and so on and so forth. Infrastructure is going to play a very important role as well, you know, as the car becomes more and more autonomous. Um, you know, we're looking at basically working with the state uh, and, sit, you know, various different uh, uh, city initiatives to make uh, the city and the, uh, and the traffic, uh, uh, inform uh, traffic uh, signaling and other interactions, uh, you know, between the car. So, for example, um, you know, the, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to vehicle communication uh, uh, innovation which is going on basically. So the idea here basically is very simple that the car, you know, as, as it's driving on the road, you know, should be able to interact with other cars which are on the road, but also should be able to interact with the infrastructure that's there on the road. So the use case could be that, you know, before it's approaching a traffic uh, signal, it should know what the state of the traffic signal would be by the time it approaches there, and it's already basically taking certain actions, you know, as it's driving uh, autonomously or semi-autonomously to avoid accidents, to avoid, you know, uh, jumping of red lights and, and causing deaths and, 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 uh, and, and so on and so forth, right? So the whole idea basically is that uh, the vehicle-to-vehicle interactions and vehicle to infrastructure interactions, you know, become, you know, very important. All this is, is happening with lots of partnerships which are happening in the industry. I think, I don't think so, this, this whole space is huge and, uh, you know, I don't think so there is any one company who can do it all. Um, certainly, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as Harman Samsung, you know, we're one of the large, larger you know, technology companies with a lot of different building blocks, but we also think that we need, you know, very strong partnerships, you know, with uh, uh, industry leaders in different spaces, you know, be it, you know, uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft, or, you know, other, you know, uh, subsystem providers like many of you here in this room, you know, providing various different building blocks, you know, for display and, 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 and so on. And talent obviously always plays a very important role as well. Uh, moving on to, uh, you know, the uh, cloud platforms, um, you know, the example I want to give here basically is that, you know, uh, 20 years back, 25 years back, you know, as we all were using PCs, um, you know, we took our PCs, you know, which was a very uh, uh, powerful, um, uh, you know, hardware compute platform at that time, and we basically connected it to the Internet. Uh, we created a uh, platform to basically enable you know, various different apps on the PCs. At that time, Microsoft did that, right, with its uh, Win 16, Win 32, Win uh, Windows 64 APIs, and a lot of you know, industry kind of you know, got together to write lots of different apps for the PCs. Uh, the platform exposed the capabilities of that PC, that, that, that uh, um, uh, very powerful compute uh, device, and uh, with a lot of different IOs and so on and so forth, and, and apps basically came in and used that capabilities to basically create new functionality. We know what happened, right, with, uh, with internet and, and everything else. Uh, we did the same thing 10 years back with, uh, uh, with mobile devices. You know, uh, two major platforms uh, were created. Apple created iOS, Google created Android. And basically, if you look at what these two platforms do, they basically take the hardware capabilities of a very smart uh, mobile uh, compute platform, you know, which, which we call mobile phone, and basically expose the capabilities of this, uh, this platform onto, uh, you know, for apps and, you know, to be written, and, and new um, services and new functionality to be created using, you know, for, this, for these mobile devices. Obviously, uh, we saw what happened in the last 10 years, right, with regards to kind of in the explosion uh, in the mobile industry, right, of, of, the, of uh, using the mobile phone in, in uh, all kinds of, you know, different ways uh, that each of, each of us do. Uh, same thing is, is, is happening in the automotive space as well. Uh, the, the, the car is getting more connected. And, and the intelligence of, of, of the compute platform inside the car is also converging into, into a device you know, where uh, using a, a software platform uh, uh, which is cloud connected, you know, you can basically kind of, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, deliver all kinds of different services, uh, you know, inside the car. 
obviously uh, displays you know are going to play a very important role we talked about that but i think i think this this connectivity uh, uh, um, you know to the car which uh, basically you know is, you know has uh, has has very powerful capabilities to take uh, take us from a to b uh, you know, will 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 also create you know new opportunities. You know, so for example, uh, you know today's um, <clears throat> the way the insurance industry works today, uh, it's a huge industry, and and the but the way the in insurance industry works is that it basically looks at you know uh, your past record, and based on your past record, uh, you know they basically try to uh, decide how risky you are. Or how good a driver you are, and, and hence what your you know insurance rates should be. Uh, the future of uh, this industry is very different. So as the car gets you know more connected um, and more autonomous, you know the uh, um, uh, lot of the way the driver is driving today will basically define you know how uh, the insurance rates will be for that day. Meaning, if you're a driver, you know, who's basically kind of, you know, accelerating and deaccelerating, this information, this data uh, is, is absolutely being generated inside the car. And if, with your user, with your permission, if this data is shared by the, uh, you know, with the uh, insurance agency, you know, suddenly now the insurance agency can basically, uh, you know, decide, you know, how good a driver you are. Or you know, do you always drive above the speed limits? Do you stay within the speed limits? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So the point I'm making is basically that that you know you can you can you know take a decision about uh, uh, the driving patterns of a driver based on how they're driving today, rather than you know how they were driving previously. Right. Uh, based on your accident and other profile, uh, you know, history and so on and so forth. Uh, there are similar other examples as well. Service industry. Right. You know. You know, it, it, I'm sure it has happened to, to many of us that, you know, we, we take the car in for service and our car needs a certain, uh, uh, you know, new parts and they don't have it and they basically ask us to come back and so on and so forth. Um, uh, a car uh, inside is generating these, these codes called DTC codes, you know, uh, uh, defect uh, uh, codes, which basically, you know, once the car is connected to the internet, you know, these DTC codes can be basically transmitted on the internet uh, and, and uh, various different uh, uh, automotive service providers can basically, you know, uh, take the, those DTC codes, they have the make and model and other information about the car, and they can basically decide, you know, do they have the parts that are needed to service your car and basically give you a quote so that when you go take your car in for service, you know, all the parts are there and you don't have to make, you don't have to make repeated uh, trips and so on and so forth. So uh, the point I'm making here basically is that, you know, just like in the PC industry and also in the, in the mobile industry, you know, when we took this, this powerful, powerful compute platform, mobile or PC, and connected it to the, to, to the internet, created a platform which basically allowed, you know, various different, uh, you know, services to, uh, to innovate, same thing is going to happen in the car as well. And, and what that basically means is, you know, a lot of, a lot of opportunity for, for, for all of us and our, 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 our companies. So, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 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 what, what does this mean uh, from a, you know, display industry standpoint, you know, at CES this year, you know, we uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, had a demo car, which basically, you know, uh, created a uh, uh, user experience, you know, for, for the car, uh, for the driver and the passenger inside the car. And I keep mentioning passengers because, you know, if you think about it, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, over the last so many years, we have improved uh, the, the experience uh, for a driver uh, inside the car. But what we have not done is, you know, basically done much for the passengers. Uh, I think uh, as this industry moves forward, I think we have to basically look at, you know, both the drivers and the passengers and what we can do, right, for, for, to, to help and, and make uh, the experience much better uh, for, for both. 
I wish um, I had a, a video uh, of, of this car to play here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, so I'll explain it. Uh, but the idea basically was to kind of you know use uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, the, the wind, windscreen and also uh, the rear seat uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the you know uh, 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 screens as well you know as basically uh, displays which can be used for various different purposes. They can be used for entertainment. They can be used for um, you know productivity uh, and, and 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 so on and so forth. And we created this demo car where you know the windscreens and the rear screens and the side screens in the in the in the in the rear seat were basically being used you know for various different purposes not just the screens you know which we traditionally use inside the car so that's uh, you know uh, we have to basically think outside the box on 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 how to to create uh, new experiences and 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 basically look at you know uh, how do we give uh, uh, people what they want you know when they are t making the journey you know inside the car and 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 make it easier for the driver and make it uh, you know uh, uh, you know entertaining for for the passengers and 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 create them to kind of you know you, you know use use that time for productivity or use it for entertainment or both and 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 and, and enable that with you know all these new technologies that I talked about so uh, sorry um, so in terms of you know uh, summarizing uh, you know the the discussion here this uh, this morning i think uh, uh, you know to create that ultimate road trip uh, you know the autonomy uh, that that we are all working towards is just the start it's it's definitely uh, uh, it's not the destination um, i think uh, there is a lot of innovation that will come you know as you know some of these base technologies you know come together uh, user experience uh, and uh, you know how you know we basically kind of you know create the display technologies and and and, and so on and so forth and and the interaction with those display technologies using voice using haptic feedback touch other ways you know will become you know extremely important you know you know i was thinking about you know uh, the curved tvs uh, but but the curved displays inside the car you know is is you know even more important i think uh, the real application of 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 the curved displays probably Inside the car than anywhere else because you know you know it basically kind of you know fits in very well with the way you know we we interact you know inside the car. I think uh, uh, technology will play uh, a very important role in 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 providing you know the uh, uh, the connectivity, the uh, centralization of all the functions, and and also uh, you know uh, creating autonomous and 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 other you know capabilities inside the car. And finally, I think, uh, as I mentioned, architecture, infrastructure, and partnerships, you know, and, and, and uh, people will play a very important role. Thank you very much.